And what, what other questions do they ask you on the book tour? They ask me a lot about Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. Do I resent her? Is it a vendetta? Am I going after her? Do mm -hmm. I have a contract out on it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question to ask. I, I guess because they see her as... The breaker up of the fabulous Debbie and Eddie team, yeah. my parents. Yeah. And did, did you perceive it that way at the time or even now? No, I'm starting to now. I didn't resent Liz till this tour. <laughs> and now, uh, now I'm pretty upset. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to buy the perfume. Is it... Uh... <laughs>Did you call Liz Taylor like, ma'am? Oh, yeah, I still do. Yeah. She, she adores me, drags me up onto her lap. What happened today, darling? How is the book doing? She adores me. No. Uh, no, I met her once when I was about three. I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel with my father, and what I remember was she was wearing like a see-through negligee when she answered the door. And I remembered... I remember it, so I, I must have known it was very important, and this was the clue to what had happened that had gone wrong. And did your mother, was she kind of, what was she then? Was she as ang angry? She's not angry. I'm on her behalf. But my mother has, was never upset. She was always like a fan of Elizabeth Taylor. Well, <laughs> 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 if you're going to be left with somebody. Might as know? well be Elizabeth Taylor, and that is really probably the truth. That's her ego wasn't damaged, I'm sure. Oh, it was. It was. Because Elizabeth was a friend. And it was a very public humiliation, and she wanted to die. And she had two small infants, and you cannot have the luxury of being depressed. I know this now, too. Ladies and gentlemen, for her bold support of gay and lesbian community before the invention of a gay movement and her superhuman fight against AIDS, I'd like to present the Glad Vanguard Award to my stepmother, Elizabeth Taylor. Harry has forgiven Elizabeth Taylor, too. The best thing Elizabeth Taylor did for me was to get Eddie Fisher out of our house. Well, so no, just, just fill us in on the story. Some of the oh. kids weren't born when it happened. The Debbie... Right. I wasn't born when it well, that's happened. That's true. So you weren't, yeah. I've just been told. I'm stunned that this right. happened. It was... Your, your mother was married to... To my father. To your father. My, uh... <laughs> Hey, these days, you know, that's <laughs> you something. Know. Uh, My father was a man named Eddie Fisher, and uh, he they were best friends with uh, Elizabeth Taylor and her husband at the time, Mike Todd. Mike Todd tragically, tragically passed died. away yeah. in a plane accident, and my father consoled Elizabeth with his penis. <laughs> I love you. I've always loved you. I love you more every time I see you. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, you know, that's really... You so, can say it with flowers. Or you, or can, or you can... That well, really, that's not saying it. That's shouting it, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's a movie... Uh, I, I've never seen this film. I, I don't even know if it's available, called These Old Broads. Oh, well, it's not. It was a TV movie. Right, right. And uh, with my mom, Shirley MacLaine, Elizabeth Taylor. Now, that must have been an unusual experience, writing for your mom I, It's and hard Elizabeth to Taylor. actually get me to admit to an unusual experience. <laughs> By then, that wasn't an unusual... Uh, Elizabeth Taylor, someone else who I gave awards to. Right. Thanking her for getting Eddie Fisher out of our house. <laughs> uh, my mother has a big scene with Elizabeth. Mm. And they, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of a takeoff on if right. they ever sat down and dished Eddie. Right. This would be what they did. So I had them sit down and talk about all that and kind of. So, took what was notes. it like for them to do a scene like that? That must have been. Is it, has uh, that, I time think, I, it was great. Yeah, it right. had, absolutely. 
they had a good time doing it. Carrie broke it down well, in her HBO special, Wishful Drinking. My father flew to Elizabeth's side, gradually making his way slowly to her front. <laughs> this made marriage to my mother awkward. Joining me now is Eddie's daughter, Elizabeth's stepdaughter, author and actress, Carrie Fisher. Carrie, thank you very much, first of all, for agreeing to do this interview. It must be a, a very sad day for you. Very sad, especially, uh, I mean, I, I lost my father this year, and uh, <clears throat> not that many months ago, and actually I, I called Elizabeth to tell her when he passed, and she cried. Did she really? Which I thought was incredibly sweet. I mean, she had really a, a, a sense of family, even a bizarre, you know, someone that she had been married to so long ago. And what, what kind of person was Elizabeth Taylor, away from the glare of the media coverage? What was the real Elizabeth like, do you think? Well, to me, she, she really, she, she literally loved a good time, you know, uh, she, uh, I remember one time uh, she pushed me in the pool after establishing that I wouldn't pull her in afterwards. And she used to have uh, these egg hunts at her house for all the children, and she seemed to love doing stuff like that. And she, uh, she just, one night I went on, we went on a double date. It was uh, uh, Elizabeth and Michael Jackson and Shirley MacLaine and myself. Wow. And it was like, we, we no one noticed Shirley and I. <laughs> uh, but it, she, Michael had given her that day. Michael gave her jewelry. Mm. And she, she loved presents. And he had given her these earrings and a necklace that night. And I remember how happy she was. Your uh, father and Elizabeth famously didn't speak for nearly 40 years until 2007, but your mother, Debbie Reynolds, said that she spoke to her just two weeks ago and they had a very good conversation. No, yes, yeah, she... Well, yeah, I mean, my mother said, uh, you know, Elizabeth wasn't feeling that well and, and, and I think, like Carol said, she just... You know, she, she was someone who really enjoyed having a vital life. And, uh, you know, to be sort of bedridden like that, I don't... <laughs> I think she'd rather be in bed another way. <laughs> so she wasn't, you know, she wasn't enjoying herself. And, and to, for you, Carrie, what was it like growing up in the glare of such overwhelming publicity and kind of these huge stars around you all the time? It couldn't have been normal. Well, I have no idea what, but it was my normal. Mm. You know, I had nothing really, nothing to compare it to. Uh, but, you know, she, uh, she was a very, I mean, ultimately, I became friends with her. And, uh, you know, I, I, I liked it, the, the celebrities of that time. I mean, like, they, like people were saying, the paparazzi, they would literally live in the yard. I mean, the scandal of my father uh, leaving my mother for Elizabeth and I would spend, over the years, I, I'd go, I once was having a cooking lesson, and the woman said to me, I hate your father. I, I you know, he, did, he left her for that woman. <laughs> it, it, people carried that scandal with them forever, and they would talk to me about it in the abstract, in a way. And what did you think that your father uh, ended up thinking about Elizabeth? I know what he thought. He loved her. I mean, my father said, I was talking to him one of the last times I saw him, and he said she, she was the source. That's what he said, that she was just this, I got the, it was this tremendous source of vitality, of just embracing life. He was quoted as saying, though, that life's about having passions. And whether it was acting or her work for AIDS charities, uh, you could see that driving her every day. But the real passion, it seemed to me, was always men. And she had all these amazingly charismatic 
male figures in her life. Tonight we've heard from Joan Collins and Larry King two different uh, names put forward as the great love of her life. One Richard Burton, the other Michael Todd. What do you think? Well, I, I think uh, when I spoke to her about, I said to her one night, uh, you know, did you, did you love my father? And she said, we kept Mike Todd alive. Because yeah. my, my father and Mike Todd had been best friends. And subsequently, my, my father actually adopted Liza Todd. Mm. Um, and I said to her, so Mike, he, he must have been extraordinary. And she said he was amazing. He just, you know, there was no one like him. So, I, you know, and their relationship was obviously, you know, cut short by the, mm. his terrible plane accident. So, you know, with, with, with Richard, they, you know, their relationship went to its natural conclusion and then began again. Mm. But with Mike, it was, you know, interrupted. But I do believe that those were the two men. Um, maybe Rich, you know, she and Richard had more time together. But that sense, you know, losing someone the way she did. And the plane was called the Lucky Liz. Mm. Um, you know, that was horrible for her. Uh, the other great thing that she had was this extraordinary empathy for people who were suffering, particularly if they were addicted to, to, to something that was destroying their lives. You went through a painful addiction, and she did too herself. What was it about her that enabled her to have that empathy, do you think? I, well, I think I always call it sort of rampant empathy. You know, you're sort of susceptible to... Everyone gets on your grid. And, you know, in a way, you're trying to mute your experience to keep all that out. I mean, and, and I think she was just susceptible to other people's energy. And also, I think a lot of her, you know, with her, it was alcohol. And when I was, I mean, you know, that thing, when I was young, alcohol, people who drank alcohol looked like this to me. <laughs> and I think Elizabeth was, was one of those people that looked like that. And how would you like to remember her, Carrie? How would you like the world to remember Elizabeth Taylor? She was this incredibly vital, and she had a great, great sense of humor. And I think, you know, that's something that I don't think people saw enough of with her. And, and she had, at one point, she'd asked me to give her this award for her empathy and her, you know, uh, all of her charity work. And I, I, rem I thanked her for uh, getting Eddie out of our house. And she thought that was hilarious. And she just had the, she, uh, she and my mother ended up laughing really so much about that, th those times all those years ago. So I think, I, I, I think she should be remembered as a woman who really loved life and whatever was part of that, men and her, and you know, her acting and her friends and her family certainly. When she passed away, she left my mother a suite of jewels. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Hmm. She, a suite, which I didn't know what that was. Yeah, what is a suite a of jewels? A hotel room filled with... <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, earrings, a pin, and a ring. How did your mother react to the gift from Elizabeth Taylor? Well, of course, she was, like, incredibly touched. I yeah. mean, they become... You know, they were friends to begin with, ish, show yeah. business yeah. friends. And, you know, the leaving of the <laughs> – put a kind of a damper on their relationship. For a little while it was, yeah. Yeah.